one thing I ask, one thing I seek, is, is to, to live, live in the house, house of the Lord. Every breath, every word, every thought, every moment, every, every minute, every, every day. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. 1,440 minutes. All for God's glory. Thank you for tuning in yes. today. We're so Welcome glad you're here. Thank you, thank you. I hope y'all had a good Thanksgiving. I, I had the best Ooh. Thanksgiving. Delicious Can we do it again? The best food. Honestly, I have again? leftovers. Man. We can do it again. Oh, we'll be over. What was your favorite dish? My favorite dish? Yeah. I, I gotta go with the mac and cheese, bro. Come on. When mac it's like crusted cheese. on top, Man, you know what I'm bro. saying, with the Come crumbs. Oh, oh. Mine's Come a classic on. mashed potato. Ooh. Yeah, classic. classic. Mashed gravy mashed or no potato. gravy? Literally gravy. Oh, oh, Always sure. gravy. Oh, Just gravy? making sure gravy? we're, we're working gravy? with gravy. What, like light gravy like or dark gravy? Oh, Ooh. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Good stuff. Oh, definitely any kind of pie. Anything sweet and delicious. What's your favorite pie, though? My favorite pie? Go. I'm thinking pumpkin, just because we're in the season. Our favorite? Yeah. My favorite is the Thanksgiving meal. I mean, you got oh, the like meal? the cranberries, oh. you got the turkey, yeah. you got oh, the meal. stuffing. He's been listening Guys. to the you thankful the, series we just right. wrapped up. Can't just pick that. one. Y'all are making man, me hungry. Man, yeah. like the milk. Oh my god. Well, look, goodness. we have a great we have word coming for you today. My goodness, oh. apple pie. You got a good word. Yes, we have a great word. I'm like, oh, we got a great word coming <laughs> oh, for you today. So stay tuned, guys. Comment. Leave your leave your likes. Leave your comments. We want to hear from you throughout the whole program, not just at the tail end. So get those in. And now we're gonna go to unexpected. It's time, time, it's time, for... it's time, it's time, it's time. It's time for you to lose again. And again unexpected. unexpected! All right, get out of here. Let no, let's share it. Let you know. got two, I got two, we can share it. Water bottle flip challenge. Unexpected water bottle flip challenge. I can't do it with the flip. Okay. That's gonna... We might, want to, we might want to take a... Should we take a little bit? I think we should take, take a little, a little bit. bit. No, you got two chances, I get two chances. Got, oh my goodness, you're not gonna get it. Ooh, that was close, <laughs> that, was, that was close. That was close. All right, I'm gonna take, I'll take so, it. Chug, 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 chug. Okay. I think we're good. Weak sauce. Ooh. We're good, no. Oh! What's that mean? Now I get another chance. Woo! Oh, snap. Uh, kids. Double flip. No, oh my I think goodness. We need to, I think we... And that was unexpected. What's up, 1440? Thank you so much for joining us What's this up? week. I can't believe we're just one week away from December, which is just madness. You know what? I, I don't crazy. even know what to say. But anyways, we are going to kick off just a, a cool two-week series for the next couple of weeks called Far From Home. And we're going to be talking about the story of the prodigal son from Luke chapter 15 yeah. and how it can apply to our lives. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think this is a, you know, kind of sometimes can be looked at as a cliche Bible story that everybody yeah. knows, everybody's heard, but we're hoping to provide some insight and some, you know, believing the Lord's gonna minister to you through this story in a way that you can really apply to your life. Yeah, so. I agree. And here's the thing, just to kind of add to that, mm -hmm. I don't believe anything is in the scripture on accident. Right. And I know you know this, but maybe our audience today doesn't really recognize or maybe just didn't happen to know or think about it. Mm -hmm. That listen, every single thing in our Bible is there on, on purpose. purpose. Everything yep. is on purpose. And so when we look at this scripture, it's kind of like, uh, oh, I've heard that before. Yeah, but it was in there on purpose. Mm -hmm. So there's gotta be a way to apply it. There's gotta be a new way to look at this. And I believe today, we're actually gonna learn some fresh Amen. perspectives and points of view. I'm excited. Amen, me too. Let's roll. So let's go ahead, we'll just jump in. I wanna read this story first, and then Pastor Quest and I are gonna talk about yeah. uh, some takeaways from this story. Yeah. So uh, if you have your Bible, or you wanna turn on your Bible, go to Luke chapter 15. We're gonna start in verse 11. Let me preface this with, this is Jesus talking to a bunch of Pharisees. Yeah. And the Pharisees are asking Jesus, you know, why is it that you hang out with bad people, right? Because Jesus was having dinner with tax collectors. He's hanging out with people who have a past. Let's just put it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. That, that What's up with that, Jesus? That ticks the Pharisees off, right. you know, because they right. were stuck in that spirit of religion. So they asked Jesus, why is it that you're spending all this time with these sinners? Yeah. And then Jesus tells this parable. 
and this is the parable of the prodigal son. It says, there was a certain man who had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the part of the property that falls to me. And he divided the estate between them. And not many days after that, the younger son gathered up all that he had and journeyed into a distant country. And there he wasted his fortune in reckless and loose restraint living. And that's what prodigal means. Yeah. It doesn't mean loss. It actually means reckless or wasteful. Yeah. Verse 14. And when he had spent all that he had, a mighty famine came upon that country and he began to fall behind and be in want. So he went and forced or glued himself upon one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed hogs. We're going to come back to that in verse 16. And he would gladly have fed on and filled his belly with the carob pods that the hogs were eating, but they could not satisfy his hunger and nobody gave him anything better. Wow. Yeah. Then when he came to himself, and I love this because here we see that the prodigal son has a defining moment. It says that he came to himself and said, how many hired servants of my father have enough food and even food to spare, but here I am perishing and dying of hunger. I will get up and I will go to my father. And I know many of you have done this before, <laughs> right? You're like, you rehearse the speech in your brain of what you're gonna go tell mom and dad or whoever, right? You rehearse this in your head and this is what he's doing. He says, I will go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Wow. Just make me like one of your hired servants. And so he got up and he came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity and tenderness for him. And he ran and embraced him and kissed him fervently. And the son said to him, now here he goes, starting that, that whole speech. He says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Wow. And in verse 22, it says, but, and the father cuts him off. It says, the father said to his bond servants, bring quickly the best robe, the festive robe of honor and put it on him and give him a ring for his hand and sandals for his feet and bring out that fatted calf and kill it and let us revel and feast and be happy and make merry because this is my son who was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found so and they good. began to revel and feast and make merry. And I'm going to stop there because I know next week Pastor Quest is actually going to be on with Terry Minor Jr. And they're going to talk about the second half of this story, yeah. talk mm -hmm. about the older son, right? I think we could just camp out here and talk a little bit about yeah. the story. Honestly, there's, there's, there's two primary things that I'm seeing here. Yeah. So I am seeing a father's perspective of a returning son. Mm -hmm. it, it's amazing how you can take for granted a season and yeah. find yourself in a state of rebellion, mm -hmm. falling completely away from it and going, Man, I, I just, I would rather be anywhere but here. I'll, I'll serve you. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll. It's like literally leaving a home, an organization in full rebellion yeah. and then saying, I'll come back as a as anything. Yeah. I'll take anything just to get back within that presence. Right. And I love that because his response was not, well, you know what? We're going to make you ride the back row or mm -hmm. we're going to, you know what? You're right. Actually, that's a good idea. Uh, why don't yeah. you spend the next year proving yourself? Right. Prove that you mean what you say this time. Mm -hmm. You know, I love this because the father's response to the son was a direct reflection of the father's response right. to us. Right. Anytime we're in a moment like that, mm -hmm. there's so much to say about this. Yeah, that's so but good. But anytime we're in a moment of uncertainty, of sin, of outright rebellion, whatever that, whatever that is, that this was an actual reflection mm -hmm. of the Father, our Heavenly Father's yeah. response to you in your state of sin. There's so much we can say about yeah. this. Yeah, well, and you apply what you just said. You apply that yeah. to the setting of, yeah. of where Jesus is telling this parable. Remember yeah. I said at the beginning, the Pharisees are asking Jesus, why are you hanging out with all these sinners? Right. And here Jesus tells this story, and I think it's so fitting because Jesus is sitting here painting the picture that, you know what, it doesn't matter how rebellious you've been or how sinful they were, mm -hmm. you know, my love for them mm -hmm. remains unconditional. And right. I think that's really the underlying theme of the story. Yeah. But, you know, something I think is so interesting too is we read this story and it's easy to just read it at face value. And I think it's powerful to read it at face value. Yeah. You can glean a lot from the text. Absolutely. But I think understanding the culture and the history um, of that time yeah. really brings out a lot more. I know for me, when I started Definitely. to study this, 
it was like, oh my gosh, there's so many things in this passage I never even knew about. Yeah. You know, one of those was at the very beginning of the story when the younger son, he asks his father for his inheritance. This isn't just like a, That's hey dad, can I can I get my, my share of my inheritance early? This is actually the equivalent in that time to going up to your father. And back then in Jewish culture, the older you were, the more respected you were, the more honor you were shown, yeah. you know? So this is an elderly father with a young son who comes to him and says, you're dead to me, yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. like forget you, forget, mm -hmm. you know, the place you hold in my because life. Because the inheritance came upon the death of a father. Right. It came, it, yeah, when the father died is when the son would receive yeah. that inheritance. And it actually, I, I was looking it up and it says that father would have had to split up his land and actually sell a portion of his assets to be able to give the son the money he was asking for. Yeah. So this wasn't just like daddy had Sitting a whole bunch of money in somewhere. a bank account, right? right? The father actually to, to meet his son's request had to you know, sell a portion of the land that yeah. he owned, the, the yeah. livestock that he owned. So deal. this was like a spit in the face to his father. And, and in that culture too, whenever you were disrespectful and dishonoring, mm -hmm. You know, not only were you essentially cut off from your family, yeah. but you were cut off from your entire community. Yeah. You know, we, we talk, we see in the Bible all the time, people getting stoned. You know, we, yeah. we know the story of the adulterous woman who got stoned in the street or was about to get stoned in the street yeah. and Jesus, you know, comes and, and oh, intervenes. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. but that was a common thing of the day. So the fact that this son not only told his father, essentially, you're dead to me and left, but the fact that he came back, that son was risking I mean, getting killed death. in the streets, death, yeah. mm -hmm. because of the dishonor that he had shame. shown his father, you know? Yeah. And the fact that his father didn't care. And let's be real, everyone knew about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When the father responded the way he did, it wasn't like, yeah. all right, well, you know, we've kept this quiet for so long. I'll tell your mom right. and we'll get things situated and pretend like nothing ever happened. I know. I mean, the guy threw a party. They threw yeah. a party. All right, 1440, we are going to pray about the health of our students and, and our country and our people. Yeah. So I'm just going to start on a prayer. Jesus, I just thank you so much that, that you are our healer. Um, and I thank you that you're always going to come through. I thank you that whatever sickness that we're going through, whatever thing that's wrong with our body, um, I pray for, for people to help show us, to help surround us, to, to encourage us and let us know that we are healed in Jesus' yeah. name, that, that the blood has has just washed off any sickness that's in our body. Yeah, and Father, I also pray over the mental health of these students, God, that in this time, while the season's changing, it's getting colder, maybe families traveling, leaving, things are going on, God, and it's kind of a busy time. So I just pray over the mental health of these students that they can take some time to just breathe and to find you, God, and, and to know that, that you are with them and that, that you you can carry them through anything, God, and that they're not alone. This is not a lonely time. This is a time for joy and a time to celebrate you, God. And so we just thank you for that and this time. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Most people will tell the story, just the story. Right. And it's like, whoa. Tell why he, Jesus told the story, yeah. because that changes everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think it goes to show that maybe you need to be more kind to people. Maybe you and I need to be more loving to yeah. people who are prodigal mm -hmm. or who ne who have never experienced Jesus, who aren't Christians. Yeah. Not everybody comes to church with us. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is how do you respond like Jesus did right. to people who are in sin by not shutting them out, but also recognize that even when we fall yeah. into trials, temptations, and moments of sin that you and I have a father yeah. um, who's real, who's willing and ready to throw a party. Mm -hmm. You know and what I willing, mean? And willing, doesn't care what anyone else has to say about right. it. You know, his yeah. love for you is unfazed yeah. by the opinions of the world, yeah. by the things that you've done. And you see that too because uh, the fact that the father ran to his son. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was a, that's another historical Come on. cultural thing because back in, in ancient times, running, um, was taboo, right? When you were older, you didn't run because it required for that man, mm -hmm. for the father to pull up his tunic and expose his legs to be, that way he didn't trip, right? They just didn't do that. That was a, that was a classic yeah. symbol of embarrassment and mm -hmm. shame. And the, so not only is the son coming back, but the father is actually running to his son mm -hmm picking up his robes, doesn't right. care what anyone else mm -hmm. has to say. And a lot of scholars actually say the reason the father ran to his son is to intercept 
and, and meet his son before anybody else could get to him. And I think that's to so maybe interesting. Stop him well, I have it written in my Bible. So good. I have it written in my Bible here in Luke 15. I said, what would have happened if the prodigal son ran into the older brother before the father? Oh, that's a good and question. And I think just what you just said is so key. You know, how do we interact with people who are quote unquote prodigal, who mm -hmm. are living in sin? Are you a reflection of your father? Yeah. Or maybe that hypothetical big right. brother. Right, could you imagine him saying, how dare you? How mm -hmm. dare you come back? How dare you have some audacity to come back and think that you know, you're gonna be welcomed back. Think that our father is still gonna make a place for you. Yeah. I mean, and I, I know so many Christians, you know, applying this to a modern setting, yeah. so many Christians who sound that way. Yeah. You know, and I don't wanna get the cart before the horse, because I know sure. y'all are talking about the no, older brother next week. it's great, week. it's a great setup but, for it. But, you know, grace is always unfair until it's you. That's right. Right, it's always, you know, grace is always like, oh, no fair, you know, they went and did that, and it's you no need fair, it. until all of a sudden you're the one in that place where you need to be extended the grace of God, the mercy of God. And so I think, you know, as a as a 1440 student, yeah. whether you're in your school, maybe you have bro actual brothers or sisters yeah. who, have, who are not walking with the Lord, whatever the situation is, you know people in your life who aren't living um, in communion with the Father, I would encourage you to extend that, that same kind of grace, yeah. understanding how the Father views that person. That's right. Don't be like, don't be a voice for the enemy. Yeah. Don't be a voice that would come yeah. in and say, uh, who do you think you are? Uh, how do you think you're just gonna get right with God all of a sudden? Uh, yeah. Don't you know, don't you remember what you did last Friday? Don't be that kind of a person because right. love, which is who God That's is, it. He keeps no record of wrongs, yeah. you know, and we're called to extend that same grace, that same love, that same um, yeah. compassion towards the people of God that yeah. God himself extends. That's exactly right. And I love that you said that, Yeah. that God himself extends. And I think obviously we are, we are entering into the holiday season, but mm -hmm. truth be told, I mean, we're, we're entering Jesus season where it's, we're entering Christmas time. Yeah. And what better time, here's the truth, if I can just be totally candid uh, for just a moment, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to see a big flux of people into yeah. our churches. Yeah. Welcome to the holidays, you know, <laughs> whether it's Easter or whether it's Christmas. And uh, you're going to see people you haven't seen in a while. You're mm -hmm. going to see people you've never ever seen before. And the question always is, is how do we react to people we haven't seen in a while? Yeah. Especially if you know the dirt on them. Yeah. Like if we could just be real for a minute, because mm -hmm. we talk about that mercy, that grace, um, a direct reflection of the Father to somebody else. How do we respond when we know something about somebody? How yeah. do we respond? And so I'm just extending that out as well. Mm -hmm. You know, as we approach that Christmas season, uh, whether you're in church or out of church. Yeah. And uh, I have stories for days of family members who have been, uh, you know, to speak in Christianese, because I know that not everybody watching is super Christian yeah. and is a 30 year faith veteran. Okay, not everybody has a clue what we're talking about mm -hmm. sometimes. And so um, I think it's so important that when you recognize that God has a plan and a purpose for everybody's mm -hmm. life, including yours, extend a little grace, extend yeah. a little mercy when they mess up mm -hmm. because you will too. Yeah, and you see, you know, I think something that's so cool right yeah. along in that same vein is are we interacting with people? Are the words that we're saying yeah. edifying them, building them up, encouraging them? Because yeah. you see, that's what the father did. You know, when, when he reaches he reaches his son, he hugs his son, and then the, he immediately, he calls for a robe to come be put on his son, a ring to be put on his finger, right. sandals to be put on his feet. And if you wanna examine the actual biblical significance of those things, yeah. Robe, a robe would restore would have restored that son's dignity in front in front of for the whole community Talk to about see. It. Full because this son would have been dirty. He had no shoes. He he's been tending to pigs, which in Jewish Jewish culture, pigs are the most unclean mm -hmm. thing. So for him yeah. to be actually tending to pigs is in Jewish culture would have been considered worse than being dead. Just low. Yeah, as low as it gets. And so low, here's this low. son covered in dirt, covered in filth you know, bare feet, you know, Quest, you've got kids. I've got two <laughs> younger adopted sisters at home. And I was telling them this story actually this past weekend before bed, we were t I was telling them a Bible story and this was the story we were talking about. Yeah. And my little sister, Jay Lee, she goes, but if the son and the, if the dad hugged his son, wouldn't the dad have gotten all dirty? Cause the son was all dirty. And I was like, I was like, yeah, and you know, yes. I mean, it was, I was thinking about that and what a powerful image that is mm -hmm. that again, that the father didn't care 
where his son had been, what his son had done. He was just so overjoyed that his son had came mm -hmm. home. So he restored his dignity with that robe. The ring, rings during that time were significant of both wealth and Come position. On. So he put that ring on his finger <laughs> and reinstated him, not as a servant like he yeah. asked, yeah. right? But as his son, sandals on his feet. You know, and I just think even the significance of that is so it's important. Huge. Because again, if the it's father huge. was dealing with his son in a way that was dignifying, yeah. in a way that uh, that that combated the shame and yeah. the judgment and the condemnation yes. that not only the community would have put on him, but also he would have put on himself. So many of us can't even forgive ourselves for mistakes we've made in the right. past. This is something that we can digest yeah. and dissect for weeks and weeks mm -hmm. and weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the day, at the bottom, the yeah. bottom, bottom line of some of this is uh, from all the perspectives of how do you treat yourself when you fail right. to how do you treat others when they fail? Mm -hmm. To how does the Lord see you and God treat you yeah. when you fail? And how do you treat others? Yeah. You know, like Pastor Quest it's said, this deal. is the perfect time to remember this because we've mm. got so many people coming into church, so many people we're surrounded with who need that grace, who yeah. need somebody. And when everybody else is saying, shame on you, shame on you, yeah. see somebody who's gonna call out greatness in them, somebody mm -hmm. who's gonna call them closer to the Lord. Yeah. You know, and that's who we're called that's to right. be. God is love. We're called to be extensions of who He is. Yeah. And so that's our, our encouragement for you this week. Just walk in that love, walk yeah. in that grace, that mercy that you've been uh, a, a free recipient of, right? God yeah. has freely given all of that to you yeah. so you can freely give it to other people. Listen, this has been an awesome time in the Word. Time I'm flies. excited for next week. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be great. But until then, just remember that we love you. We're praying for you. You've got a purpose and a plan for your life, and we're excited to see you walking that out. We'll catch you next week. My father, I've sinned against you. I thought I had it figured out, but turns out I had the wrong view. I chased freedom like the wind, caught the tail of destiny, hoping to go where I'd never been. But the end result just made me cringe. How could I ever be worthy of your love? For you are both grace and mercy, and I am not enough. For you loved me, yet I spat in your face. You raised me, yet I have been a disgrace. I am not worthy of this place, even less to stand before your grace. Please do not call me your son, for you are worthy and I am undone. Let me be as a servant in your courts and stand among the others that fall short. I will not make any demands. I simply place myself at the mercy of your hand. To have lived in your house was a blessing I once had, but now my desire is to serve in your halls and be part of your plan. Be kind to me, though I'm not worthy of your kindness. And when you look at me, please look for your likeness. Why get a shot? when you can get your daily dose of laughter. Proverbs 17, 22 says, a joyful heart is good medicine. Like a shot, but, but a better. crushed spirit dries up the bones. Don't have a crushed spirit. Wah, wah, wah. And this we is won't. Daily Dose. I'm SG. And I'm Hannah. And we're here to make sure that your spirit isn't crushed. And you get a lot of medicine. <laughs> but the good, the good, the medicine. biblical kind. All right, our special guest today is Terry Minor Jr. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, so sorry. Oh. If I could dance that good, I'd be amazing. Oh. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Doing yeah. great. Doing Tell great. us your name. Cool. My name is Terry Minor Jr. Never would have guessed What's that. Was your father Terry Minor Senior? Senior. Oh. Yeah. What was your grandfather? Ooh, Randy. <laughs> yeah, so that's Randy. Bit. This is for you, Randy. For, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna start off with some funny questions in a jar. In a jar. Right. Funny so, questions in a jar. Pull one out. Let's do it. I just and answer jingle. the funny question. All right. I'm not gonna pull it's it out. It's not that complicated. See. I'm gonna it's do pretty it. It's like fishing. Like fishing. Let's There's see if we get something fish. good. Yeah. How many chickens? I feel like this is gonna be about enchiladas. Oh, that would have been great. I don't know. Enchiladas through the paper. Thank I God. I did. Thank God for cheesy enchiladas. <laughs> you know what? I don't like enchiladas because they're slippery. Oh, wait, what? 
I don't need enchiladas. You use so. a fork. I know, I know, I you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Oh, <laughs> How many chickens would it take to kill an elephant? To kill an elephant? To kill that's an elephant. That's a violent question. That, that very yeah. is. <laughs> it's like how many chicken nuggets do you chuck at an elephant to get to tip over? Um, at a what? How many chicken nuggets chicken would you have to nuggets? chuck at an elephant to get the tip over? It'd have to be like a cannon full of Cannings, <laughs> cannons. <laughs> chicken nuggets. It'd be like, it's like a slow mo. <laughs> nuggets. Oh, if it's chickens and chickens are really lightweight, I would say 1.4 million. Wow. Imagine what that would look like. I would be a terrified. It would be oh, plague. I actually don't like chickens. It's like that much. hashtag plague. One time, <laughs> the plague of chickens. Hashtag plague. One time, plague. Um, I had to paint chickens like nails with nail polish. We like ran, my aunt wanted to paint their nails so we could identify who was who because they all look the same. Wow. Because <laughs> they're chickens. We're like running around like ah! <laughs> chasing wow. chickens. Terry, have you ever painted chickens' toenails? I have never you have done chickens. that. chickens. Uh, yes, I do. Two chickens and six. Silky chickens. What's it? The silkies have the mohawk, like a mohawk, poofy hair. Do they wear like little silk jackets? They might as Ooh. well because they look pretty snazzy. Uh, so. What are their names? Hey. Oh, only I only know the names of two right. of them. My wife named them. I know two. One name is, I think, oh, Mumble, Mr. Mumbles. Mr. Mumbles. I think one is Mr. Mr. Mumbles. Mr. Mumbles. <laughs> and I think one is Bozo. Scary. Yeah, I know, that's what I picture. I know. Wait, Bozo like, is like, no longer <laughs> with us. Sorry, that's the wrong Bozo. name. Bozo Did is no longer with us. Um, but he, <laughs> I'm sure he tastes it well. Bozo hasn't been eaten. Our serious question. Okay. I want to know what inspired you to do music, rap music for music Jesus. Rap music. For Jesus. Music, rap music. Music, rap okay. music. Music, rap music. Music, rap music. Okay, what inspired me to do music, rap music? So okay. <laughs> um, to make a very long story very, 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 very short, Ooh. my mom and my dad said they saw something in me with music when I was three years old. And like it's literally they were three. Like, oh my goodness, there's a literally a three. <laughs> there's a mic in his throat. There's a mic in his throat. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> mic in his throat. He's calling to speak. <laughs> um, but yeah, it started. Him. It started with the show called I Music Machine. Music Machine. Okay. They, they, they said it started with a cartoon. They saw me be totally just drawn to called the Music Machine, and mm -hmm. there was these kids in the forest, and there was a big machine. <laughs> if you threw a How tree branch there? or a leaf or you throw something in it. Good music will come out, and Pat Boone, a lot of people who are in faith and work faith are <laughs> actors they in the get show. In the forest. And they're in this forest. I have a lot of questions about I don't know how, I don't, I don't know who was watching the, little, the, the brother and <laughs> sister, the but they made it to the forest. So I don't know where their parents were. Oh, gosh. But this friend, they, they, they were friends with a squirrel. Don't go I into the forest. And, uh, down for the machine. Yeah. <laughs> who wrote this? And the evil guy, who was basically like Satan, like he wanted to put bad things in the machine so bad music comes out and takes over people's decisions <laughs> and things in life. And so that's what the show was, and it started there. Fast forward Three all the way through like, school, the thing. through life, through growing up, I, I focused on sports. No. And then a little later <laughs> on, after that, I, I, uh, like make a long story tip. short, God redirected my ah. life and, and rekindled that flame mm. for music when he was showing me what I was called to do at a breaking point in my life. And then I answered the call, and then it's been on since. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I actually had the honor of getting to rap with Terry Minor Jr. And he was way cooler than I was. But. How'd you feel about it in the moment? You did great, though. You did great. In the great. moment, my friend kept FaceTiming me covering the lyrics, and that was really frustrating. Oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I remember like, that. How am I supposed to rap if I can't see the words? <laughs> and, she kept, and your friend kept trying to FaceTime me. That was hilarious. I, know, it was I remember that. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, <laughs> oh, and wow. I think I'm mad, though. We should play a game. Let's play a game. game. I think mean, you should like this the whole rest of the time. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay. Explain the game. Okay. Okay. So we're going to play a game, and it's a rap battle. Oh! Okay. You're like, I do this every day. Oh. <laughs> no. With your like, okay. how old is your daughter? Like three? I have an 11 year old daughter, yeah, three year old son, and a one. Uh, oh, well, my daughter's almost two. My my uh, youngest daughter. Okay. Oh, what's your wife's two. name? Hannah. Ooh. Uh oh. Not your name. <laughs> Not, I don't have any kids. <laughs> so what we're gonna we do win. is you're gonna draw a topic, All right. and then you have to rap about it, oh, and then we're, we're gonna draw a topic, okay. and then we'll two. rap about it. Also, oh, two against one. Yeah. Yes. Because wow. we're that bad, and you're that. I think I'm gonna have to phone a friend. We need. I, no. You can't. 
We don't have any more mics. We don't have any more. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Let's we do don't this. Know your All friends. right. Let's Drum roll, please. Wait, you should pick that one. Did you say I don't and know your friends? And it's going to be friends? the fastest rap battle ever. One. I can't pick the one she tell me because <laughs> that, I probably have that one. <laughs> some premeditated lyrics. I pulled it one more than the rest so that I know. Okay. He didn't get it. We're going to rap about. We won't pick it. It's okay. Wow. I talked about this on the broadcast and now we're rapping about it. What? Lost my phone. Oh, but you don't <gasps> get it back. Wow. That's amazing. Unless in your rap, you do. Okay. You ready? Also, we don't get it back. So we're going to make your beat? Come on. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So uh, slow. I said I lost my oh. phone. It happened when I was alone. Now that phone is gone. Uh -uh. So I'm gonna have to <laughs> sing a song. Now where is my phone? Where'd it go? What am I doing? I know that my angel knows. So angel, Ooh. where's my phone? Oh. <laughs> there we go. There That's we go. That's so there good, go. Terry. Thank go. you. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Oh, I dear. think, and you're gonna make our beat. Okay. So I'll this do is this. gonna be a lot okay, better than down. our beat. He's really good at making okay. beats. I picked it. Did you not want me to pick that? <laughs> it's cool. It's going to be a fun one. I don't know how oh, I know do what this. this is. If this is I from know. Pastor Dwayne's episode. It is. Potato salad. Potato salad. Potato salad. Uh, okay. You want okay. me to start? I don't know how to you do You ready? This. Okay, I'll do a phrase and then you do a phrase. We'll see how this goes. Okay. Okay. No pressure. Just like a cool person here. Mm. I went to a church potluck and saw potato salad on the <laughs> lawn. Lawn. <laughs> Oh no, it talked to me and I had to say, I don't like your sauce and I don't like your tea. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like your potatoes, yes it's true, but they upset my stomach. Doop -de -doop. Oh. <laughs> Bars. You just did a whole lot yourself. Well, Terry, right. thank, thank you so you. much thank for coming. You. It was an honor. Thank on you. The day. This was an honor that we got to rap alongside him. I know. To one of your thank beats. You. So your, check out yeah. his music, Terry Minor Jr., Dot Bulldog com. Faith. What's some other ones? Favor Bow. Flow. Favor Down. Flow. Give Me a J. What's next? Solid Rock. Solid, solid rock. rock. Solid Rock. You rap. Solid, solid rock. rock. Solid Rock. All right, check okay. it out. This has been The Daily Dose. The Daily Dose. The Daily, Daily Dose. dose. Wow. I hope that was an awesome word, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yes. So yes, good. Yes, it was. Amazing. We're so thankful mm -hmm. you guys have been joining us to watch these, these yeah. episodes. They're really, really good. Yeah. God is just so good. He's always moving and always speaking to us through the yeah. pastors. Amen. Always. And then on social media, you know, probably going to say, gonna put, say a little, put a little book for the Bible, you know, because oh, that was a good, good word yeah. that we had. At least it's not a leaf. Uh, yeah, at least it's not a leaf. Ooh, you know, we're no leaving done. There's hey, no more leaves. Leaving that behind. You really know? look outside. Yeah, we're going straight to the. So put a little little book right in the comment section. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sounds good. Yeah. And remember, you guys were created on a purpose. For a purpose. So go live on purpose. Yeah. <laughs>